Hello and welcome to another low intensity workout with me, Coach Dai. Today we're going to get the body moving. This is suitable for a recovery workout or if you just need to check the boxes of getting some movement done today. It's going to be short, it's going to be sharp, but we're going to go through four main movements where we work from the ground up after we finish our prep. And that's where we'll begin, down on the ground and preparing our body for what's to come. So just lay yourself down in a nice comfortable position, straight spine, so we have full access to the lungs. We're going to start to breathe in through the tummy. So you're going to draw the air in, tummy will rise, the ribs expand, and breathe out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. You can place one hand on your tummy, one hand on your chest, and the hand over the stomach will rise first and most, and the chest last and least. Just go at your own speed. We're going to draw the air in now for six seconds and then exhale for two. So it's in for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale. In for six. Exhale. Four more, your six second count, your two second exhale. Then we're going to take our arms down to the sides, feet around shoulder width. We're just going to start a little internal and external rotation of the hips. So I'm dropping one leg in, one leg out. Not forcing any range of motion and not counting reps. Just getting that joint capsule flowing, just getting the hips flowing. If you've been sat down at the desk, doing a lot of work today, we want to make sure we're loosening up the hips very well. We'll also loosen up through your thoracic spine. And just try as you do this, gradually increase your range of motion. And keep your focus on your breath as well. Breathe in through your nose. Inhale and exhale. And we'll stop at the middle. Bring the knees nice and tight into your chest. So you're creating a little ball. We're just going to roll these small movements. So you're pulling your chair, your knees up to your chest coming around in a circular fashion, loosening up in the lower back. And change direction. Top, just hold your knees in this 90 degree position along with the hips. And now we're going to rock side to side. 
Again, I'm not counting. I'm concentrating on keeping my low back close to the ground. You start to feel some tension in your abdominals. Small movements, just enough so you feel the muscles in the core switch on. Hold at the top, and then just roll onto your side, arms out in front, and like an archer drawing the bow, we are going to open through the thoracic spine and back to the middle. Breathe out as you open. We're going to get eight reps on each side. You need to relax your breath. And when you've done eight, you can roll over, do eight on the other side. Same thing, roughly 90 degrees there at your hips and your knees. A good way to do this is to post up on the outside of your shoulder. So there's a little gap here underneath your hip. So we know now we have this nice straight spine. So we can access our full and proper rotation. Eight total reps. Back onto your back, and we're going to use this movement as the first one in the main block of our workout today. But it's also going to uh, activate our glutes a little and get us some mobility in the front of the hips. So your heels about 15 centimeters away from your bottom. We're going to bridge the so glute bridge, pushing the ground down. And then reach. So you're going to reach up and across a little. Back down. Same thing. Bridge up. Reach over. So you're getting a little stretch. Or at least an elongation of those tissues. Down one side. So I'm not counting reps on this first round. Just going to flow. Just going to move a little bit for a period of time. Want you to relax and I'll focus on the counting, focus on the movement that you're pushing the ground and that you're reaching those fingertips far overhead. Okay, relax there. We're going to come on to our side next and we're going to go into a star pattern. So you're going to post up on your elbow and your knee. The top leg is raised and mirroring the bottom leg. As if you're attached here by a belt and a cable that is going to pull your hips down and back. And then the cable is going to pull you back in the other direction, hips up and forward. Hips get pulled down and back up and forward and you see I'm adding just a little bit of rotation through my torso so I'm turning my chest to the floor. Two more on this first round, nice and easy and slow and steady. Same on the other side, post up on your elbow, post up on your knee the belt, the cable, pulls your hips down and back, pulls you up and forward. Try to keep this nice straight line through your spine, and your spine includes your neck as well.
Just two more. And relax. We're going to come up into a half kneeling position here. One hand, which is on the same side as the leg that's going to be in front of your body, is going to reach up to the sky. I'll show you on this side what's happening first. So as if you're reaching to the roof, you're going to take the open side hand to the ground, hinge a little at your hips, which allows you to take your elbow to the floor. Rise back up, everything faces in front. So that one hand to the sky, open side, and up. Nice and slow, keep it controlled. Don't worry if you can't take that elbow all the way to the ground. That's okay, just work with your range. Make sure that you hinge through your hips. And it helps a little as well if on the front side, you open up, maybe at around 30 to 45 degrees. Now you create more ability for your hips to hinge. Same on the other side. So you wanna start in that position where you slightly open on the front. Wrong hand, silly me. So you reach in, hinge, down to the ground. Keep an eye on those fingertips. That's your focus point. So we go through the reps on the second side to look up that your hand is always reaching to the roof. Again, not counting reps on this first round, just going through the movements and learning the patterns. One more rep. And we can stand up. So we're going to stitch a couple of movements together here on this next one. The first of which we go into an inverted hamstring. So we're going to hit that aeroplane position. Arms spread out wide. I'm looking to get long from head to heel. Don't worry about how low you go. The focus is on how long you can stay here. Reach across the stance leg. So you're rotating in, and then you're going to drive out to this position into a single leg stance. That's part one. Then you allow your weight to come forward into a lunge on that front side. Look at the positive shin angle before altering to a sprinter's position. Looks like I'm coming out of the blocks. Rotate in towards that front leg which is the opposite rotation to the last movement and drive out of there into that single leg stance. Walk it back, do exactly the same then on the other side. Inverted hamstring, thread across, single leg stance. Step into the lunge, sprint this position, with rotation, up to the top, hold that single leg position. Step down, walk it back a little. It's okay if you lose your balance a little bit here. We're just trying to flow between these different movements. Same then we'll do one more on each side. Inverted hamstring, thread. Coming up. Single leg stance, as tall as you can be. Control into your lunge. Positive shin angle. Allows you to get into the sprinter's position. We thread again over that front leg. Up, single leg stance. One more time, hit the other side. Always nice to get the hips and the spine rotated. Go at your own speed.
and relax. So there we have our four movements. We just went through the patterning of them. Now we're gonna make it a little more structured. So we're gonna start back on the ground with our glute bridge reach. We're not going for a huge volume here. Remember today is our low intensity workout. So I'm only gonna do six of these on each side. Heels, six inches from your bottom. Bridge and reach. Slow is better. It's gonna give you more control. It's a more deliberate movement. Breathe out as you push the ground. Nice big heel print left in the floor. Really reach. Of course, if you roll too far, you're going to lose your balance. There's elements of stability involved here as well. Make sure you get your six or there or thereabouts on each side. Up next into a star pattern. So we're going to advance this movement on a little from where we were on the first round. Still set at the same elbow, knee, straight line. But now as your hips go down and back and the cable pulls, you're going to reach that top arm forward. So you're going to reach away. And then as you come back up, pull. So you get a little roll like action in here. Like your cable is being pulled into your body. Six times. Down and back, reach away, up and forward, pull in. Again, slow and controlled, and this is one, maybe you start to feel the shoulders get a little fatigued, but primarily the glutes, so the muscles around the outside of your bottom. Same on the other side, post it up, nice straight line, hips down and back, arm reaches forward. Hips up and forward, pull into your hip. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, into a half kneeling position, so we're going to hit the windmill. Now this is a great one at home where you can add a little bit of weight or add a little something else to challenge to ensure you've got the shoulder stability. So I do have kettlebells, which we'll use here on the third round. If you have a kettlebell, go ahead and hold the kettlebell. If you don't have anything like this, just balance something on your fist. So that could be, I'm using a slide here, but you could use a shoe, a hat, anything really that you can balance up high. Front leg, open if needs be. Reach up to the sky, and now as you come down to the ground, lower to your elbow, we're checking to ensure shoulder is stable, because this is not falling off my face. Six times on each side. Rotate, hand first, hips sit back, you lower your elbow to the ground. So we're getting nice movement in the hips, in the thoracic spine, strengthening the shoulders and our posture all in one movement. Move down, same thing the other side. Six reps, set your position. As you go through this, just pay attention to the differences potentially from one side to the other. So maybe 
you find it's easier to get into the position from like right to left, left to right. Maybe you find it's easier to stabilize on one side than the other. That's okay. We are not perfectly symmetrical beings, and that's not necessarily the goal. So I just want you to be aware of that, that there are differences left to right. Up onto your feet. After you've done six reps each side, we're going to go into a flow of a global movement sequence, but we're only going to do three on each side, so a total of six reps. Remember, inverted hamstring. Spider-Man shoots his web up into that single leg stance. Step into your lunge. Sprinter come out of the blocks. Spider-Man threads his web again. And up, single leg stance. Walk it back, same on the other side. So you're just going into the inverted hamstring on the opposite leg. Go at your own pace, keep it controlled. If you want intent, have the intent to come out of the bottom position here into that single leg stance. And likewise, you can create intent out of the inverted hamstring rotation into single leg stance. Control, put on the brakes, thread the position, drive out of it. Three total on each side. Don't worry if you fall a little behind because you're moving slower. That is okay. Likewise, if you're rushing ahead a little bit, you end up doing four each side, it's okay. So we just want to move today. We don't want to create too much fatigue. We're using this workout as a recovery. We're ensuring that our body is moving, getting the chance to recover, not just from physical activity, but physical inactivity as well. So you spend a lot of time in those seated positions. That's something we also need to recover from. There we go. One more round. So we're going to do the same thing, same reps. So we're working in sixes, heels, 15 centimeters from your bottom. Leave two big heel prints in the floor. And now on this third round, we're trying to reach just that little bit further. Reach more, reach further. Nice deep breath in as you come down. Nice deep breath out as you push. Breathe out, exhale on the force. into a star pattern. So on this time around, we can add another layer to it, totally optional. Feel free to stay where you are with the movement from the previous round. But now we can also, as we reach forward, take that top leg to reach away. So now I'm drawing a straight line from toes to fingertips, then pulling everything back to the middle. Hips down and back, everything reaches away, Hips up and forward, everything comes back to center. Six reps, straight line, straight spine. Switch after your six, same on the other side. You're doing this, your version. So whether or not you're reaching 
through hand and leg, hand and foot, or just the arm, or not at all, the movement, the pattern remains the same in terms of the hip and the thoracic spine. Get a nice little burn there on the glutes, hopefully. Into the half knee length. So if you're continuing to balance something, great. If you have the external weight, so I'm going to use a kettlebell here. This is just going to show you how you can add some weight into that movement. So I've got my kettlebell, I've got my nice stacked shoulder with my shoulder blades packed in nicely to my spine. Hand, lower it down, keep your eyes up on that object. The top, rotate so everything faces front. Six each side. Don't worry if you don't have the external load. Remember the previous run, we were just balancing something up on our fist. Sometimes that's even more challenging than using the external load. Forces you to move a little slower with a little more control. Final movement into our little global movement sequence. Three each side, your own pace. Intent from the bottom, so out of the rotation, into single leg stances. Good hamstring. Thread spine man shoots as well. Drive up, single leg stance, lunge. Spring with rotation, single leg stance. Walk it back, same on the other side. Remember, it's not about how long you go in, or focuses on how long you are getting. And then at the top, how tall you be in, how controlled you take it into the lunge, how much you rotate towards that front leg, and again, how tall and stable you can be in that top position. <sighs> Exhale as you create the force. Control. Sprint position, we should always generate that positive shin angle. Do not forget that. Also, I'm doing this deliberately in barefoot today, I did not mention this yet. So now you can have a good grip on the ground. Big toe, little toe and heel. You've heard me talking quite a lot about this in previous sessions. But that tripod of support through the foot. Keep your big toe in contact with the ground. Almost like you're gripping the toe, gripping the floor through your big toe. Last one. Each side. And down. So maybe you want to continue, feel free to pause the video here, do another round, do another two rounds, depending on your time and how you're feeling. But we've just done three rounds there. Think of it as a warm-up round and then two working sets. 
So we're going to go down and start to recover back in the position that we began. And to recover, we're just going to focus in on slowing the breath down to take control back over our nervous system. Put us in a good position to recover even further and relax to be prepared for whatever is coming later or tomorrow. Hand in your tummy, hand in your chest. In through your nose and out through your nose. Just want you to focus on slowing the breath down. Slow the inhale. Slow the exhale. And work towards a four second inhale with an eight second exhale. If you feel comfortable, you breathe in through your belly, and not shrugging your shoulders, you can just relax your arms up to the ground, or really open up to the sides. Continue with this breath for around two minutes. When you come to a close, just return your breathing to a regular cadence, slowly coming up off the ground, being careful of lightheadedness. And hopefully, the main achievement today is that you feel a little bit better at the finish than you did at the beginning. Thank you for joining us for the low intensity workout. See you again very soon.